Have you ever wondered why the country of Korea got divided into North and South? You probably think that it's because of the Korean War, and you're right. But what exactly caused the Korean War to happen that it reached a point of dividing the country into two? If that's the question you have in mind, then this video is for you. Hi, welcome to our channel. Today, we're going to continue our exploration of the wars that occurred in the past and learn about what really happened there. One war, although it did not get much media attention compared to the others, remains a relevant topic today when it comes to studying world history. It is the Korean War, and we're going to learn what started it and how it ended. Before we begin, why don't you share your thoughts about what your assumptions are as to why the Korean War happened? Type them in the comments below. Now before we talk about what exactly caused the Korean War, let's first understand the events prior to the war to further understand the war's history. The immediate origins of the Korean War can be traced back to the collapse of the Japanese Empire in September 1945, following the end of World War II. Unlike other territories like China, Manchuria, and the Western colonies seized by Japan in 1941 to 1942, Korea, which had been controlled by Japan since 1910, didn't have its own government or leaders ready to take over after the war. Instead, potential leaders were scattered as exiles in various places such as China, Manchuria, Japan, the USSR, and the United States. These individuals fell into two main groups. The first group comprised committed Marxist revolutionaries who had fought against the Japanese as part of the Chinese-dominated guerrilla armies in Manchuria and China. Among them was Kim Il-sung, a relatively minor but successful guerrilla leader who had received training in Russia and held a major rank in the Soviet army. The other Korean nationalist movement, equally revolutionary, drew inspiration from the advancements in science, education, and industry in Europe, Japan, and America. These ultranationalists were divided into competing factions, with one faction being led by Syngman Rhee, who had been educated in the United States and had previously served as the president of a dissident Korean provisional government in exile. In a rushed attempt to disarm the Japanese army and send back the Japanese population in Korea, estimated at 700,000 after World War II, the United States and the Soviet Union agreed in August 1945 to divide the country along the 38th parallel for administrative purposes. Initially, this division was meant to be temporary from the American viewpoint. However, the Soviets instigated a brief period of terror in northern Korea, causing many refugees to flee south and thereby politically dividing the nation. The two sides couldn't agree on a method for unifying Korea. In 1947, U.S. President Harry S. Truman convinced the United Nations to take responsibility for the country, although the U.S. military still had nominal control over the South until 1948. The South Korean National Police and Constabulary doubled in size, forming a security force of around 80,000 by 1947. Meanwhile, Kim Il-sung consolidated his control over the Communist Party, Northern Administrative Structure, and military forces. By 1948, North Korea's military and police comprised about 100,000, supported by Southern Korean guerrillas based in Heju, Western Korea. In its broader goal, the rebel uprising didn't succeed. The Republic of Korea was established in August 1948 with Syngman Rhee becoming the president. By autumn that year, fighting had broken out in various parts of every Korean province below the 38th parallel. This conflict grew into a small-scale border war, involving the newly established Republic of Korea, Army in the South, the North Korean Border Constabulary, and the North's Korean People's Army. However, nearly 8,000 members of the South Korean security forces and at least 30,000 other Koreans died during this period. Many of the victims were not part of the security forces or armed rebels, but ordinary individuals labeled as rightists or reds by those involved in the conflict. Small-scale acts of extreme violence became common occurrences. Did you guess right as to why Korea got divided into two? Tell us in the comments below, 
along with your other thoughts so far. In early 1949, Kim Il-sung argued to Soviet leader Joseph Stalin that it was time to launch a conventional attack on the South. However, Stalin declined, concerned about the North Korean forces' lack of preparation and the potential involvement of the United States. Over the following year, the communist leaders transformed the North Korean People's Army into a powerful offensive force, modeled after a Soviet mechanized army. Chinese veterans from the People's Liberation Army were released to assist, and the Soviets supplied weapons. By 1950, North Korea had significant advantages over the South in terms of military equipment. Following another visit by Kim to Moscow in March to April 1950, Stalin approved the invasion plan. And so, after years of escalating tensions, the Korean War finally broke out on June 25, 1950. In the early hours of June 25, the North Koreans launched an attack across the 38th parallel, accompanied by a powerful artillery assault. North Korea's goal was to conquer South Korea militarily and unite the country under the communist North Korean government. The main offensive was carried out by the KPA-1 Corps, consisting of 53,000 soldiers, advancing across the Imjin River towards Seoul. The second corps, with 54,000 soldiers, attacked along two separate routes, one through Chuncheon and Inje to Hongchun, and the other down the East Coast Road toward Kangnung. By the afternoon of June 28, the KPA had entered Seoul. However, they didn't achieve their goal of a quick surrender from the re-government and the collapse of the South Korean army. Instead, remaining Roka forces in the Seoul area established a defensive line south of the Han River. On the East Coast Road, Roka units retreated in an organized manner. Nevertheless, to prevent further collapse, the South needed assistance, particularly from the U.S. armed forces. Worried that the Soviet Union and Communist China might have supported this invasion, President Harry S. Truman deployed U.S. air, ground, and naval forces to assist the Republic of Korea in its defense as part of the combined United Nations forces. Truman appointed General Douglas MacArthur as the commander of the United Nations Command. Truman's initial response was to instruct MacArthur to provide weapons to the ROCA, or Republic of Korea Army, and use air support to facilitate the evacuation of U.S. citizens. Instead of pushing for a formal declaration of war from Congress, which he considered too time-consuming given the urgency of the situation, Truman sought approval from the United Nations. Under U.S. guidance, the UN called for the invasion to cease on June 25th and urged member states to offer military assistance to the ROK on June 27th. The Security Council passed these resolutions, which could have been vetoed by a permanent member like the Soviet Union. However, the Soviets were boycotting the Council due to the issue of admitting Communist China to the UN. In the United States, both Congress and the public supported military intervention without significant opposition. In the initial weeks of August, the United Nations Command, formerly known as MacArthur's Theater Forces, started to slow down North Koreans' advance. The 8th Army, led by Lieutenant General Walton H. Walker, a highly skilled corps commander during World War II in Europe, and the Republic of Korea Army, under Major General Chung il Kwan, regrouped and counterattacked more effectively. Vital supplies were transported through the port at Pusan where the 8th Army relied on the expertise of Korean and Japanese technicians and the labor of thousands of Korean workers. To counter the North Koreans' tanks, artillery, and infantry, Walker deployed Sherman and Pershing medium tanks, rocket launchers, artillery pieces, anti-aircraft guns, and, notably, close-air support aircraft. Simultaneously, fresh U.S. Army and Marine Corps units arrived, joined by a British Commonwealth Brigade. During this period, the ROCA, which had significantly reduced in strength due to casualties, surrenders, a few defections, and substantial desertions, began replenishing its ranks with reservists, student volunteers, and men forcibly conscripted from the streets of cities as South Korean forces retreated. With U.S., U.N., and South Korean forces trapped near the sea at Pusan, MacArthur planned a bold amphibious attack on Inchon, a western port in Korea. 
After successfully landing, MacArthur used a coordinated movement to defeat the North Korean army, retake Seoul, and push beyond the 38th parallel, the dividing line between North and South Korea. Worried that the U.S. might use North Korea as a base against Manchuria, China sent its army secretly across the Yalu River. This Chinese force attacked the U.S., U.N., and Arak forces. It was only when Lt. Gen. Matthew Ridgway took command of ground forces that American morale improved and the tide turned against the Chinese communists. Despite President Truman's desire for a quick end to the war and his request for MacArthur to be more diplomatic, the skilled strategist ignored presidential orders and continued to make inflammatory statements about reunifying Korea. After gaining the support of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, Truman removed MacArthur from his position. This decision was deeply unpopular in the United States, as MacArthur was seen as a beloved war hero. Only the backing of the JCS, or Joint Chiefs of Staff, prevented Truman from facing impeachment after firing MacArthur. Ridgway took over MacArthur's position and built strong defenses just north of the 38th parallel, preventing the communists from advancing. Occasionally, he launched attacks on the Iron Triangle, the area where the communists planned attacks on South Korea. Peace talks started in Kasong but moved to Panmunjom and continued slowly throughout 1951 and 1952. The U.S. tried using strategic bombing to pressure the communists into making a peace deal, but they refused, especially concerning the issue of returning prisoners of war. Both sides didn't want to seem weak, so the talks dragged on, sometimes stalling for months. It wasn't until Eisenhower, a respected war hero and a Republican, became president that the U.S. could make significant concessions to the communists. In 1953, a peace treaty was signed at Panmunjom, ending the Korean War. Korea returned to a divided state, much like before the war. However, the war and its resolution didn't reduce the Cold War tensions of that time. Since then, Koreans consider the war their second major tragedy after Japanese colonial rule. It resulted in widespread destruction and the loss of three million lives. Additionally, it solidified the division of a once unified society that had lasted for 13 centuries, permanently separating millions of families. What are your final thoughts after knowing the events of the Korean War? Share them in the comments below. If you find this video helpful, please give it a like, hit subscribe, and turn on the notification bell. Thanks for watching.